Thank you, Professor Ala, for uh, the nice and elegant uh, presentation. It's an, indeed a uh, very complex uh, disease, and I guess that it's a disease of unmet need, and uh, we are continuing to uh, do our research to improve the outcome of our patients. So with an intense pleasure, it's uh, an honor to uh, invite to uh, um, give an enlight about uh, whether to escalate or de-escalate um, the treatment of triple negative in the neoadjuvant uh, setting. Um, is a, the well known the, the reason for the continuation of this uh, uh, conference despite all the situations that we have um, uh, thank you so much for uh, keeping this activity and collecting us all uh, Professor Hisham Al Ghazali uh, please welcome him thank you So thank you very much, uh, Professor Ahmed, and uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for um, this introduction. And it's really a pleasure to uh, connect with you all, uh, Dr. Ala, Dr. Marwan, Dr. Naji, uh, Dr. Banu. I know this is very late night now uh, in your side. I hope uh, next year to be face-to-face uh, -face again, but we will keep our digital transformation and uh, this hybrid activity uh, uh, because of the maximum reach that we reach this, uh, this year in the BGICC. We will talk about the escalation and de-escalation of the new advent treatment. And uh, now we will uh, know, we know the outlines of this uh, presentation. So what we know about the triple negative breast cancer so how to go for escalation, the correlation between pathological complete response and the triple negative, and how to achieve higher pathological complete response. Shall we go for more dense, tum dense chemotherapy, more intense chemotherapy, the effect of adding a platinum, PARP inhibitors, checkpoint inhibitors. And then to go to the de-escalation strategy Shall we go for this in the triple negative breast cancer? And we'll talk about the omission of chemo in very early stage, replacing anthracyclines and the response-guided therapy, and the barb inhibitor and the new approach in this. As Marwan said, and Dr. Ala, the triple negative breast cancer is a unique entity and unique subtype with estrogen receptor, progesterone receptor, HER2 negative in the immunohistochemistry. It accounts about 10 to 15 percent. We all know that it's sig significantly more aggressive, majority grade three, affecting usually the young age group, unfortunately. And we just said it is a heterogeneous disease with molecular classification of now, we could consider them four. And we have different, you know, basal-like one, basal-like two, mesenchymal and luminal androgen receptor. And we may have a potential therapeutic approach, but till now, there is no proven clinical utility for these subgroups. Look to this very beautiful uh, graph. And it is very, very important definition of the pathological complete response according to the German group and MD Anderson group that is complete disappearance of the tumor cells inside the breast and the lymph nodes. And we may go for in, allow the inside to component. And you see here that those patients who achieve pathological complete response in the triple negative and in the other subtypes doing a very good uh, outcome with high probability of being alive compared to those patients who not achieve the pathological complete response either in the triple negative which more worse or the other tumor subtypes. Again, the Cortazar meta-analysis showing that the pathological complete as response as, uh, achievement is surrogate for a better outcome in the overall survival and the, free, and the, the event free survival, and it is more obvious in the triple negative population. Not only the pathological complete response, but you see here, even the residual cancer burden, so 
more you achieve a response and more you have a better outcome. You see here the residual cancer burden one, two, and three better have better responses and more less residual cancer burden that you have a better outcome. And the good thing that in the triple negative breast cancer subgroup, we have better pathological complete response in the meta-analysis by the German group compared to the other tumor subtypes. So how to go for escalation of this pathological complete response? How to enhance to go for more pathological complete response? So what is the type of chemo? Can we go for dense chemo, intense chemo? So it is, you see here in the German group again, meta-analysis showing that patient with the dose dense regimen has a higher pathological complete response. And this is also mentioned in the keynote 522 by Professor Schmidt that the dose, dose intensity matter. So you see here that the full exposure to the chemotherapy have a higher pathological complete response uh, compared to the less than full exposure. And as you see here in this, uh, in this meta-regression analysis of 28 randomized prospective study that the dose dense those dense and those intensified regimen have a higher have a higher disease-free survival and overall survival compared to the other capsaicin or the ordinary anthracycline and taxine. And even Professor von Moinkwitz showing in his also meta-analysis that the higher dose of anthracycline, the higher dose of taxine matter, and going for more pathological complete response, not compared to the number of cycles, but the most more dense regimen. So what about the platinum? And you just mentioned by Dr. Ala, the GBAR-60 trial by Professor von Menkwitz, comparing the baclitaxel with non-begylated liposomal doxorobitin, with or without carboplatin. And you see here how beautiful the pathological complete response increasing, 53.2% compared to 36.9% in the non-platinum arm. And also improvement in the three years disease-free survival in the triple negative population. But in the CalGB trial, the condition is not the same. So we have a baclitaxel with or without BIVA and with compared to them with the addition of carboplatin. And you see here that the again in the event-free survival in the GBAR-60 trial, 9.7% compared to only 4.9% in the, in the uh, 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 CalGB trial. And this is explained by multiple things, including that, that we have higher patient with early disease and different patient characteristics between two trials. And you see the most important that the carboplatin used in concurrent way and also using in the EUC2 in weekly regimen. But the CARB have a clear impact in this by 2 trial. You see here the addition of carboplatin, velibarib with BARB inhibitor, with baclitaxel compared to baclitaxel only then AC. You see here how beautiful improvement in the pathological complete response reaching about 51% compared to only 26% in non-carboplatin, non-velibarib arm. And here, uh, uh, the brightness study by Professor Siebel Leubel showing clearly that addition of carboplatin matter. So it is a comparison between the valibarib, carboplatin, baclitaxel, compared to baclitaxel with carboplatin, compared to baclitaxel alone. And you see here the results. It's very, very beautiful, showing that the addition of carboplatin, either alone or with valibarib, have higher pathological complete response, 53 or 58%. So there is no matter to add valibarib, but the most important is to add carboplatin compared to only 31% pathological complete response in non-carbo R. Going to the uh, main player now, the immunotherapy, the checkpoint inhibitor in the new adjuvant setting. And uh, you see here the, an important trial, the gbar novo trial, important concept that combining Durvalumab with placebo 
firstly without chemotherapy in window, in window phase, and then going to compare to add nabaclitaxel in both arm. And see here in the subgroup analysis that patients receiving the in the window, in the window phase, improvement in the pathological complete response compared to the other uh, placebo. And again, here you see that in spite there is no difference in the pathological complete response in the whole group, but you see in the wind group improvement in the uh, pathological complete response 61% compared to 41% in the placebo R. Again, this by two trial, the addition of Bembro to Baclitaxel reaching a beautiful pathological complete response 60% compared to 20% alone. And this is like uh, most of the phase one, phase two trials in the, with the immunotherapy. You see here that, especially with the addition of nabaclitaxel, you see the pathological complete response rate reaching about 60%, and the addition of the baclitaxel reaching about 40%. And this is the most important study by Peter Schmatz uh, uh, in five, uh, Keynote 522, comparing the carboplatin baclitaxel with anthracyclines, com uh, with the addition of the bembolizumab compared to the same chemotherapy without uh, bembolizumab, and then going for adjuvant bembro for, uh, for uh, nine cycles, from one to nine cycles, compared to the placebo. Improvements in the pathological complete response, and you see here, which is very, very important, that improvement in the pathological complete response either in the PDL1 positive and PDL1 negative population. And also there is a trend to improving the uh, uh, event free survival. And this is also again in the ATIZO, the impassion 031, addition of ATIZO to uh, with nabaclitaxel and going to atezolizumab with doxorubicin cyclophosphamide and again in the adjuvant setting going for 11 doses of atezolizumab and again there is improvement in the pathological complete response with the addition of the ATIZO in either positive and in the negative BDL1 population. But there is a disconcordance in, in the studies. Not all the immune therapy are perfect inside the triple, ne in the triple negative new adjuvant phase. And Luca Giannini, in his important trial, the new TREBS trial, comparing the carboplatin, nabaclitaxel, with or without atezolizumab, and you see here that the pathological complete response rate in both groups is not different. Different explanation about this, including the chemotherapy partner, the patient characteristics, and so it is important to go more deeply to study the addition of the checkpoint inhibitor in the new adjuvant setting. Going to the new concept in the treble negative breast cancer population, can we go for this calculation in this subgroup? Yes, the role of chemotherapy in patients with T1B and 0M0. Recent data, just published in 2021, showing that about 2,000 eligible patients with T1B and 0M0 uh, uh, having the same breast cancer specific survival like those patients not receiving chemotherapy. The overall survival is different, but the breast cancer specific survival is the same in those patients who have chemotherapy compared to those who have not chemotherapy, either in grade one and two or grade three or, with or without radiation. So, very important question now. Can platinum replace anthracycline? Can we go for response-guided therapy and the treble negative breast cancer? And this is the ADAPT trial, comparing the nabaclitaxel carbo with nabaclitaxel gem, and again, the effect of carb you see here, higher pathological complete response, higher improvement in the, in the outcome and the event-free survival. And the most important now is this slide, that patients who have a treble negative breast cancer achieving a pathological complete response after carboplatin and giving them anthracyclines 
there is no difference. There is no difference in the outcome, either in the overall survival or event-free survival. So the, we can omit the anthracyclines if we achieve pathological complete response after, um, after the new adjuvant treatment with carboplatin containing. Another trial, the new stop trial by Professor Sharma, uh, comparing docetaxel carboplatin every three weeks compared to the standard regimen, the weekly taxol every th and every three weeks carboplatin followed by EC. And you see here clearly that the PCR rate and residual cancer burden is the same. And another new trial just mentioned by Professor Banu is the INFORM trial comparing directly in the patient with BRCA mutation the platinum versus AC very clearly showing that there is no difference in the pathological complete response rate between two groups. So what about the BARB inhibitor in the new adjuvant setting? You see here how beautiful is the results of the telazoparib, the residual cancer burden zero and one reaching about 63%, telazoparib alone. So it is coming now the addition of the BARB inhibitor in the neoadjuvant setting must be studied more. And again, the gbar ola trial, BARB inhibitor versus carboplatin with improvement is about the BCR rate 55.1% versus 48.6% in the carbo arm. So may have another strategy in this population and can we go for like combining the systemic treatment with local treatment? Can we combine the chemotherapy, the immunotherapy with radiation therapy? And we all know that the abscobal effect of the radiation, and you know that radiation therapy is immunogenic in murine mammary carcinoma. And you see here one of the trial by Professor MacArthur in phase two trial, Bembro with radiotherapy and metastatic treble negative uh, breast cancer. And how you see here how beautiful is the response in those population. And this, the recommendation of our group in last year and the treble negative breast cancer with a lot of consensus uh, um, uh, about the use of the platinum and the treble negative breast cancer. And to conclude, the treble negative breast cancer is heterogeneous di uh, disease with multiple subtypes with for better understanding of the molecular mechanism and tumor microenvironment leading to new therapeutic approach. Tailoring treatment between escalation and escalation is very, very important and those resp and the response guided therapy may be a new approach to descalate the treatment later. And one of the most important thing is development of novel diagnostics tests to help us to choose the best treatment for the best patient. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Hashem, for um, this elegant presentation. Um, we are keeping to have uh, some of the questions that comes to the panel and the speakers, and uh, actually uh, one of them uh, is for uh, Professor Ala Andil, uh, the question coming about um, the role of Avastin in the metastatic triple negative breast cancer and um, capsitabin maintenance therapy, how long to give? So, uh, Professor Ala, if uh, you can uh, come up on the stage for uh, addressing these uh, two questions. Oh, one, I. 